Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is my first update for my Hit and Switch project pan. Thank you so much for the people who gave me ideas on what to name this project. There were quite a few names that I really couldn't choose between, but I think Hit and Switch is like the best way to describe it because really I'm taking a few products, trying to use them so many times, and then I switch them out. Also, I got a bunch of band t-shirts for Christmas last year. And I'm so excited about this one. This one is from Shaky Graves, who is a musician from Texas. I'm a really big fan of his. And I saw this t-shirt on his like merch website and I fell in love with it. I love when t-shirts are long sleeve and when they have things on the sleeves. I think that's so cool. And I'm glad I thought to wear this band t-shirt first because Shaky Graves Day is actually coming up really soon. Every year on February 9th um, on Bandcamp, which is like a website where you can listen to and download artists' music, he has a Shaky Graves Day promotion where you can download any of his music and you choose the price that you pay for it. So I'll have some of my favorite songs of his down in the description box, but I just wanted to give that a shout out because I don't think I've ever worn like band tees in videos before and I thought it would be a fun way to kind of share another interest that I have, another thing that I really enjoy which is music. Anyway, let's move on to the actual subject of the video that you came to watch. I have all the products that I'm talking about today in front of me and I don't think I realized when I started the project just how many products I would be talking about in every video. Like this is very different from other project pans I've done in the past. So I am going to do my best to be succinct while still getting all the information that I want to share across. Let's start with a little recap. My project hit and switch is where I'm taking um, products from certain categories and I'm trying to use them 10 times and then I bring in new ones in their place. And every month I'm pulling like two or three products from each category to focus on. So for example, I had three blushes that I was working on last month, three highlighters, and then I also had two bronzers, both of which I wanted to use 20 times. Whichever ones I don't hit my usage goal on will roll over into the next month. And I also have more products that I'm rotating out depending on the time of the year, etc. I did make a couple changes to the number of uses, specifically for the powders and for the setting sprays. Both of them I wanted to use 25 times in a month. I've decided to move those down to 20 times instead, just because depending on how busy I am, how early I'm able to get up every morning, etc., I don't always do a full face of makeup or I don't wear makeup at all. And so I can't guarantee that I'll be doing my makeup at least 25 times a month. I think 20 is a much easier number to hit. I want to set realistic goals for myself and not push myself and force myself to wear makeup just to hit these arbitrary goals that I set for myself. And also for primers, I think I originally had those at 25 uses each. I ended up reaching for primers a lot in January and my numbers are pretty good. So I have decided to bump those up to 50 and I'm not having a specific primer for every month. I only have three primers. So I'm having them all in the rotation at all times and I'm just using them depending on what I need that day. So I'm glad I was able to really figure out what works for me and what doesn't in January, and I think that'll just make my success even more likely throughout the rest of the project. Let's start with blushes. I had three blushes I was focusing on. I wanted to use them each 10 times, and the three I had chosen for this month were the Essence Satin Touch blush in the shade Satin Love, the Makeup Revolution Matte Blush Powder in the shade Beloved, and the PYT Beauty Cheek Color in the shade Exhale. The Essence packaging broke on me. I knew it would happen eventually. Everyone I've ever seen use this on their channel. Eventually the packaging breaks, so I was expecting it. I just wish it didn't happen so soon. <laughs> and I, with the three blushes, I figured depending on the look I was creating, I could use any of these since they all have slightly different undertones and finishes. And the Beloved blush I was able to use 10 times, so that is being rolled out. Same with the PYT Exhale, I also use this one 10 times, so this is being rolled out. And the Satin Touch blush I used 6 times, so I will be holding on to this, bringing it into next month's basket, and using it an additional 4 times, hopefully, so that it can be rolled out. I am going to give a before and after of those 3 products on the screen, if you can see, because I only used them anywhere between six to 10 times. There really isn't much of a difference between any of them. I'm keeping the Essence blush, but I get to roll in two new blushes for February. The first one I wanted to pull was one of my newest blushes, and that is from the Charlotte Tilbury 
Nudegasm Face Palette. And this shade I believe is called Multi Glow. And this is a very, very glowy blush. So I have a more neutral blush, a peachy one. And then the third one I wanted to bring in, I wanted it to be a little bit different from the other two. So I brought in this mini ambient lighting blush in Mood Exposure from Hourglass. This one has kind of like a plummy, bronzy look. And even though it does look very nice and natural on the skin, it is slightly more matte. It's definitely not as glowy as the other two blushes. So I'm hoping, depending on the look I'm creating, I'll be able to reach for any of those three. I'm trying to hit 10 uses on these blushes. And because I've already used Essence six times, I only need to use this four more times. Now for highlighters, the three highlighters I was trying to focus on was Laura Geller's Peach Glow on this mini Becca highlighter in the shade Vanilla Quartz. And then the third one was this highlighter from Melt Cosmetics in the shade Stargazer. Stargazer was the champagne gold one, Peach Glow was the peachy neutral one, and then Vanilla Quartz was the, this one kind of like a white gold. It's very brightening. Um, this was one of the first times I really got a chance to use the Becca Vanilla Quartz one, and I really liked it. Every time I would kind of catch myself in the mirror, I think, wow, that actually looks really pretty. I wasn't sure about it being like a white gold type of shade, but it, it actually looks really nice. So I'm glad I did take the time to focus on this and determine whether or not it was something I really enjoyed because I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Once again, I'll show you the before and afters. So there's not really a ton of difference between any of them. Laura Geller Peach Glow, I did use 10 times. Same with Be Becca Vanilla Quartz. And then the Melt Cosmetics Stargazer, I used four times. So I can roll out the Laura Geller and the Becca Vanilla Quartz and I'm going to hold on to the Melt one and try to use it an additional six times next month. And the other two highlighters I'm going to focus on are Becca Berlin Girl Glow and the Film Star Bronze and Glow Highlighter from the Charlotte Tilbury Duo. So Becca is the cool toned, more nude one. Stargazer is the more champagne gold one. And then Film Star Bronze and Glow is very similar to Stargazer. The Melt highlighter and the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter are very similar. They do have lighter gold champagne reflex, but Melt is very, very shiny. This is a very foiled formula, so when I want something with the same undertone but maybe a little bit more natural, a little bit less intense, I'll go for the Charlotte Tilbury one. For both the blushes and the highlighters, I'm trying to use them both 10 times. For bronzers, I'm trying to use them 20 times. And the one that I focused on in January was this one from The Balm. This is the Take Home the Bronze in the shade Oliver. I did end up using this 20 times. The other bronzer that I was focusing on was the Contour one from Charlotte Tilbury. And this one I used nine times. I am gonna be rolling over the Contour wand into February hopefully using it another 11 times. And the powder bronzer I'll be focusing on is this one from Becca. It's in the shade Bali Sands, which I think was their lightest shade. And this one I also want to use 20 times. The next category is lip products. And I chose, I think, six products. Yeah, six lip products, one for each month. And I just want to reach for it 10 times. I do have lip products in my Partners in Cream Project pan those products I am actively trying to use, like I'm trying to focus on my oldest ones, but I still wanted to take some of my newer lip products and throw them in the mix and make sure I'm using those too so that they don't just like sit and age in my drawer as well. And the first one I wanted to focus on was the NYX Filler Instinct in the shade Beach Casual. This says that it's a plumping lip color. I feel like it's just a tinted lip balm, though it does have a little bit of a minty feeling to it. And my goal was to use this 10 times, but I actually ended up wearing this 14 times. I ended up really liking it with a lot of the looks I was creating, especially with the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette, which was one of my focus palettes in January. And a lot of the purpley cool tone looks that I was creating, I felt needed a little bit of balance with a peachier natural lip color. So this came in handy. I really, really liked it. The next product I'm going to be swapping out for this one is a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk Medium 2. This is definitely a lot darker and more cool toned than the NYX lip product. And I knew that I would have trouble reaching for this 10 times in one month. So I did start reaching for it a little bit in January too, just to kind of get ahead. So I've already used this twice. So I only need to use it an additional eight times in order to hit that goal in February. I, I do think because this is less of a casual color, like the next one I could kind of just throw on and it would go with a lot more looks. This one, I do think I'll need to be more intentional with 
how often I think to create looks that will go with this, but I don't think it'll be a problem. It's a beautiful formula, a really nice color, and I do tend to wear these sort of shades during the winter anyway, so I don't think it'll be too difficult. The next category is fragrances. I want to use each of my fragrances 20 times, and I usually grab two every month to focus on, hoping to hit goal on at least one, and that way I can use the second one to be a part of the next month. And something to know about how I use perfume is I do typically apply some type of perfume in the morning when I'm getting ready, but I shower at night and sometimes I like to apply perfume after I shower. I don't do it every single day, but sometimes I just have certain scents that I really like and I want to smell like them all the time. So you'll notice the uh, first one that I was focusing on was Commodity Gold and this one I was only trying to use 20 times, but I ended up using it 25 times. And the other one I was focusing on was Pacifica French Lilac. This one I used 10 times. I think in these before and after photos, it's a little bit easier to see a difference because it's something that I can use a couple sprays of. It's not a powder product that takes forever to show use on. And it is something I'm using 20 plus times. I will switch out Commodity Gold and I'll keep Pacifica French Lilac in this month, trying to use it an additional 10 times to hit that 20 mark. And the other product I'm going to focus on in the perfume category is again a Pacifica perfume. And this is a rollerball in the shade Enchanted Woods. This is a very, very, very strong scent. If you like light scents, I wouldn't go anywhere near this. If you get headaches easily from perfumes, do not try this at all. It's very, very strong and it has a very unique scent and you need so little of it. I've already used it eight times since buying it and there's like very, very little progress. It looks essentially brand new because you only need a little bit of it. Like I just put a little bit on my arm, maybe a little bit behind my ear and that's all I need to smell like this and it'd be pretty strong and it does last a long time too. So I'll be focusing on my two Pacifica perfumes this month. The next category is powders, setting powders, and these products I'm trying to use 20 times every month. And the first one I chose to focus on in January was the Charlotte's Genius Magic Powder Under Eye and Face. I think I may have accidentally called this the Airbrush Flawless Powder. Just because I have other products from Charlotte Tilbury that are the Airbrush Flawless line and I just assumed that this was part of that, but this is separate. It's the Genius Magic Powder for Under Eye and Face. I did end up using this 22 times and so I am able to roll it out and bring a new one in for February. I did really like this, but definitely not like my favorite. The powder that I'll be bringing in to replace it is another one of my newer powders and that's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. And this one is in the shade Light. I've used it once so far for this round and I do like it. I think I still prefer the Too Faced Peach Powder just because that one has a more mattifying effect versus these powders which are supposed to be more skin-like. I still think I prefer the Too Faced Peach, but that one I'll use in the warmer months when I do get more oily and I am trying to combat that versus in January in the winter. I don't mind a glowy look because typically my skin is drier and I don't want it to look dry. So this will be the powder to replace it. And again, my goal is to use it 20 times. So like I said, I switched all of my primers to a goal of 50 uses each. The three primers I'm focusing on are the e.l.f. Jelly Pop, the Youth Brightening Glow from Charlotte Tilbury, and then the Too Faced Peachy, which I took out of the container and I put in this little um, pot here and that way it was much easier for me to access. If you can see I only have the teeniest little bit left in that corner I'm almost done probably another week's use and then that one will be finished and I do have two travel sizes of that same primer in my collection So once I finish this one, I'll just move on to using those. The jelly primer is the one that I used the least I only used this five times. I really don't feel like I have this product figured out just yet if anyone has any recommendations on why they like it or how they use it, I would definitely be open to your thoughts and suggestions because it's just so unique. Like I've, I've never used anything like this on my face before and I'm not entirely sure if I like it, but it's likely user error. So I'll have to do some more research. I know a lot of people who love this primer on YouTube. So maybe I'll look into see if they do like any tutorials or demos or go into more depth about how and why this works so well for them because I don't want to give up on it just yet. I just don't think I've really figured it out yet. The Too Faced primer I have used 14 times. I focus it mainly right Right here on either side of my nose and then a little bit on my chin and then right here in the center of my forehead right where I don't want to look too oily. I still really like it and I'm 
annoyed that it's likely already been discontinued. So if anyone has any dupes for that, um, I know there are a lot of brands that do mattifying primers, but if anyone can dupe the formula for this, it doesn't have to smell like peaches. It just has to perform the same. I would really love to hear your thoughts. So that one I've used 14 times, and then the Brightening Youth Glow I've used 16 times. And the main way I like to use this is as a foundation mixer. I don't currently have a liquid highlighter in my collection, and I would typically use those to mix in with foundations to make them more skin-like, but I find that this has been a really great replacement for that. I I don't use like a ton of product. I use just like a little squeeze, maybe a pea-sized amount to mix in with my foundation. And I think it makes my foundation look a lot more natural on my skin. I think it's beautiful. I have used it on its own just as a glowy primer before and I like it that way too. So yeah, I'm very surprised I used primers this much in January because I don't typically think to reach for primers. So I think having them in this project has motivated me to remember to grab for them more. So I think in my intro, I also had setting sprays at a 25 use goal. I have lowered it to 20 now. And for very similar reasons as I did for the powder, I can't guarantee that I'll use makeup and do a full face 25 times out of the 30, 29 to 31 days that every month has. So I've lowered it to 20, but I will bring in a second setting spray. So if, if for some reason I do end up using that setting spray 20 times, I have a second one to focus on and have that roll into the next month. So the one that I was focusing on in January was this Dewy Coconut Setting Mist from e.l.f. This one I used 25 times because I think my original goal was 25. So I have exceeded the amount of uses that was my goal for January, so I will be rolling this one out. And the one that I'll be rolling in is this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This one is also a more glowy, dewy setting spray. And so if I'm trying to do a makeup look where I don't want to have this much glow, I will use the Ulta Wannabe Free Matte Setting Spray. This is just a deluxe size. So I'll try to focus on the Charlotte Tilbury one and use this one 20 times. Whenever I want something more mattifying, I'll use the Ulta one. So those are all of my products. I was trying to go more quickly because I knew that I had a lot of different products to talk about and I didn't want the video to be too long. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think the photos were helpful? I think the majority of the photos didn't show any difference at all. I think the setting sprays and the perfumes and the powders were really the only ones that showed enough progress to be interesting. Maybe the primers too. This type of project pan is still very new to me so if you have any thoughts or suggestions or ideas I'm definitely open to figuring out how to make this work best for me but also be something that people would be more interesting in watching in the first place. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this update. My next update will be at the beginning of March but in the meantime that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!